Hi there, I'm a Psych MP and I have 14 test questions for you on Disruptive Mood Dysregulation Disorder, otherwise known as DMDD. Ready? Let's learn Psych fast. Question 1. What is the minimum duration for symptoms to be present to meet the diagnostic criteria for DMDD according to the DSM-5? Is it A, 6 months, B, 1 year, C, 18 months, or D, 2 years? Answer, B, one year. For diagnosing DMDD according to the DSM-5, the symptoms of severe temper outbursts and persistent irritability must be present continuously for a minimum duration of one year. Also, symptoms must be present within at least two settings, such as the home and school. Question two. At what age must the onset of symptoms occur for a diagnosis of DMDD? Is it A, before five years of age, B, by seven years old, C, by 10 years old, or D, by 12 years old? Answer is C, by 10 years of age. Most childhood depressive disorders are diagnosed in children older than age six, but younger than age 18. But for DMDD specifically, the onset of symptoms occur by the age of 10 for the diagnosis to be made. Question 3. According to recent longitudinal data, children with DMDD are at higher risk for developing which types of disorder in the future? Is it A, bipolar disorder, B, unipolar depressive disorder and anxiety disorders, C, oppositional defiant disorder, D, Intermittent Explosive Disorder? The answer is B, Unipolar Depressive Disorder and Anxiety Disorders. So clinicians usually diagnose these children with bipolar disorder or a combination of Oppositional Defiant Disorder, ADHD, and Intermittent Explosive Disorder. Recent longitudinal data suggests, however, that these children do not typically develop classic dysregulation disorder, bipolar disorder, in late adolescence or early adulthood. Instead, studies suggest that youth with chronic irritability and severe mood dysregulation are at higher risk for future unipolar depressive disorders and anxiety disorders. Question 4. How often must temperate outbursts occur for a diagnosis of DMDD? A. Once a week. B. Twice a week. C. At least three times per week. Or D. Daily. The answer is C, at least three times a week. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, a new inclusion in DSM-5, describes severe, developmentally inappropriate, and recurrent temper outbursts at least three times per week, along with persistently irritable or angry mood between temper outbursts. Question 5. Which condition must take precedence over DMDD if both sets of diagnostic criteria are met? A. Major depressive disorder. B. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. C. Bipolar disorder. Or D. Oppositional defiant disorder. The answer is C. Bipolar disorder. A diagnosis of bipolar disorder would take precedence over this one, and the symptoms cannot occur only during a major depressive episode. Question 6. Which symptom is specifically associated with oppositional defiant disorder but not disruptive mood dysregulation disorder? Is it A. Temper outbursts, B. Anger, C. Defiance, or D. Irritability? The answer is defiance. DMDD is similar to oppositional defiant disorder in that they both include irritability, temper outbursts, and anger. Oppositional defiant disorder includes symptoms of annoyance and defiance, which disruptive mood dysregulation does not have. Question 7. Which psychiatric disorder is the most common comorbidity with DMDD? Is it A, major depressive disorder, B, anxiety disorder, C, ADHD, or D, oppositional defiant disorder? 
Answer C, ADHD. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder often co-occurs with other psychiatric disorders. The most common comorbidities are ADHD, occur 94% of the time, oppositional defiant disorder, 84% of the time, anxiety disorders, 47%, and major depressive disorder, occurring 20% of the time. Question 8. Which symptom is mentioned as part of the severe mood dysregulation that some experts associate with pediatric bipolar disorder? Is it A, depressive episodes, B, hyperarousal, C, anhedonia, or D, psychosis? The answer is B, hyperarousal. Question 9. If DMDD is found to resemble unipolar depression and anxiety disorders in its pathophysiology, which pharmacological agent would likely be first choice treatments? Is it A, atypical antipsychotic agents and mood stabilizers? B, SSRIs and stimulants? C, antidepressants and antipsychotics? Or D, benzodiazepines and beta blockers? The answer is B, SSRIs and stimulants. If DMDD is confirmed to resemble unipolar depression and anxiety disorders in its pathophysiology, and it is often comorbid with ADHD, then SSRIs and stimulants would likely be the pharmacologic agent of first choice. However, if the pathophysiology of DMDD is like bipolar disorder, then the first-line treatment for youth would include atypical antipsychotic agents and mood stabilizers. Question 10. Which combination of treatments was found effective in controlled trials for youth with severe mood dysregulation and ADHD symptoms who did not respond to stimulants? Is it A, sodium valporate and behavioral psychotherapy, B, SSRIs and cognitive behavioral therapy, C, atypical antipsychotics and psychoeducation, or D, stimulants and SSRI? The answer is A, sodium valporate and behavioral psychotherapy. So the combination of sodium valporate and behavioral psychotherapy was found effective in the controlled trial for use where severe mood dysregulation and ADHD symptoms who did not respond to stimulants. This combination yielded positive outcomes compared to placebo and behavioral psychotherapy alone. Question 11. Which psychosocial intervention is likely to be an essential component of treatment for youth with DMDD? Is it A, family therapy, B, psychoanalysts, C, cognitive behavioral psychotherapy, or D, interpersonal therapy? Answer, C, cognitive behavioral psychotherapy. Family therapy is used more so for substance use disorder or oppositional defined disorder, but it can be used for DMDD. However, it's not the primary one. Psychoanalysis is best for those with suffering and in emotional pain. And then interpersonal therapy, you know, that was originally developed to treat those with major depression, but it is also used for anxiety, PTSD, bulimia, and borderline personality disorder. So C, CBT is the correct choice here. Question 12. What might be beneficial for children diagnosed with bipolar disorder that could also help with DMDD? Is it A, pharmacologic treatments, B, psychosocial interventions, C, dietary changes, or D, sleep regulation techniques? The answer is B, psychosocial interventions. So psychosocial interventions such as cognitive behavioral psychotherapy are likely to be an essential component of treatment for youth with disruptive dysregulation disorder. And psychosocial interventions targeting children diagnosed with bipolar disorder may be beneficial. Question 13. What is the primary difference between DMDD and severe mood dysregulation? A. DMDD includes hyperarousal symptoms while SMD does not. B. DMDD lack hyperarousal symptoms while SMD includes them. C. DMDD is more common in females while SMD is more common in males. Or is it D. DMDD has an earlier mean age of onset compared to SMD? 
The answer is B. DMDD lacks hyperarousal symptoms while SMD includes them. Most of the epidemiological data applied to disruptive mood dysregulation disorder come from children and adolescents with severe mood dysregulation, which includes hyperarousal symptoms. Because disruptive mood dysregulation disorder differs from severe mood dysregulation disorder only in the absence of hyperarousal symptoms, the epidemiological data from the severe mood dysregulation disorder studies is a useful proxy for disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. The differentiation between DMDD and SMD helps clinicians to more accurately diagnose and treat children based on their symptom profiles. By excluding hyperarousal symptoms from DMDD, the DSM-5 aimed to create a distinct category that focuses on chronic irritability and temper outbursts without the complexities added by hyperarousal. Question 14. Based on epidemiological data, what is the lifetime prevalence of severe mood dysregulation, SMD, in children aged 9 to 19 years, and which gender is more affected? Is it A, 3% prevalence more prevalent in females, B, 5% prevalence equally prevalent in both genders, C, 3% prevalence more prevalent in males, or D, 5% prevalence more prevalent? prevalent in males? The answer is C, 3% prevalence more prevalent in males. You know, that's the correct answer because severe mood dysregulation has a lifetime prevalence of 3% in children ages 9 to 19 years, with males being 78% more prevalent than females, occurring only 22% of the time. All right, that's everything. Thanks for staying with us. I hope this was helpful. Please share with a classmate of yours and go ahead and click on this next video on another childhood disorder. Thanks.